Welcome to this presentation of Computer Security Best Practices for Home and Small Offices. This is an overview presentation. It's just that. However, we do like to focus a little bit on the number one operating system in the country, and that's Windows. Ask yourself this. Do you have valuable data that must be preserved? Do you use a computer for a small business? or at home with children, or both. Your system is on a network, including the internet. You should be aware of the need for computer security and what is recommended to help ameliorate some of the problems associated with that. What this presentation is not designed to do is show you how to implement these precautions. What is required? Well, you should have a basic knowledge of the operation of your computer. Kind of think of it this way. We're not asking you how to change the oil in your car, but we are asking you to be able to open the hood of your car and find the dipstick to check the oil level. You should have a basic understanding and use of a web browser. That's the piece of software on most computers that allow you to access the Internet. These are Internet Explorer for Windows, Firefox, Chrome, etc. You should have a basic use, knowledge of using and sending email and how to install the software to do that. You should know how to make sure your Windows and other needed software is up to date. What that simply means is there are patches, usually security patches, or enhancements that need to be updated periodically with all window operating systems including the software that is run on the systems the application software and most importantly you have a current backup of all your critical data and in my particular case my personal data is all of my videos pictures and music okay first let's go over some terms what is a best practice? It's basically a technique that allows consistent results that show a good result when used against and compared to a benchmark. Home, basically what that is, that's your personal residence. A small business, this can be your personal residence or it can be an office outside of the residence. Uh, you see I have SOHO. That's just an acronym for small office, home office. And the office has less than 10 computers. And they are connected via a network and including the network. Malware. Short for malicious software. These are the culprits. These are the nasties that can attack and do damage to your software. They usually do not do damage to the hardware, that is the actual computer itself. However, a broad class of these nasties can do a lot of damage and erase a lot of data. Phishing, spelled with a PH. This is usually a way to get into your computer from the outside world, such as email or downloading files or programs that may have this built into it where there are links. You click on a link, it looks like it has something to do with your bank, they request your social security number, you type in your social security number, click enter, the bad guy now has your social security number. And then you say to yourself, but it looked like it was coming from my bank. That's part of the phishing tactic. Next is ransomware. This class of malware can do two things usually. It'll come up with a screen that will lock your computer, preventing you from using your computer at all. Again, this is primarily focused on Windows. Or two, it'll lock your screen, preventing you from using your computer, but it'll also encrypt all of your data. It'll encrypt all of the data, for example, in your My Documents folder. What they want to do is they want you to go and send them some money 
Once they get the money, they'll send you a code to unlock and unencrypt your files. Sure, they will. More malware, viruses and worms. They're designed to invade your computer, copy, damage, delete your data. Primarily, though, they could be used for anything. Trojan viruses, like the Trojan horse from Greece. Software that pretends to be helpful, but it actually is gathering data about your personal computer, maybe even catching your passwords. Or worse yet, it could turn your computer into a zombie on a botnet. A zombie computer is one that is compromised by an outside entity and used to send information through your computer without your knowledge to do damage to other networks. You'll look at your computer information, everything will be fine. You'll be working just as you normally do, except you may notice your computer slowing down a little bit. It could be on a botnet doing damage to other people anywhere on the world. Spyware. Spyware is usually not anything that is going to destroy data, but boy is it going to slow down your computer. You'll get things like endless ads or pop-ups or redirections to other websites that you had no intention of going to, including some very nasty places. It could also put a lot of these toolbars on your browser. We'll show you some examples of these things later in this presentation. Now that we've covered some of the terms, who, what, where, how, and why? Well, let's look at these individually. Who is doing this? The producers of these uh, malware can be anyone from a script kitty to a nation state. Script kitties are a term referred to usually young people who get on the internet have a working knowledge of some type of programming language and really what they're trying to do is just become a nuisance. They may even try to damage your computer's software. This is not as, as apparent as it used to be. However, in the case of nation states, the recent Stuxnet virus that it plagued the uh, country of Iran and their nuclear program, that was so sophisticated that it had to have been produced by a nation or a group of nations. It required that much resource. What for? Well, again, this is varied from just plain nuisance to shutting down the power grid or other infrastructures uh, in a country or in a business that is attached to the Internet. Where are they? Well, they can be from down the street to the tip of Argentina. We have no idea where if they're on the internet, they're a potential. How? Primarily the internet, but it can also be any other forms of electronic communication. And why? Well, in my estimation, it boils down to two reasons. Politics and money. Probably both. Okay, we're going to look at some examples of a phishing attack. What does ransomware look like? if I should get it on my computer. Fake antivirus programs. Unfortunately, there are antivirus programs that mimic real antivirus programs and they again want you to buy their product. And unfortunately, they'll just drive you crazy or you won't be able to get your work done unless you do or you get rid of them. And these little nuisance things called potentially unwanted programs. A potentially unwanted program is, is a program that is downloaded attached to something that you really want that can redirect you to other areas, produce advertisements, things that are kind of just a nuisance. Okay, in this example, we get an email. In the email, it is from Wells Fargo, rather large banking institution, and they're asking for confirmation of your banking services and to show you what some changes are. Now if we look at this you'll see that we have links. If you get a link in an email from such, such as your bank, 
uh, or other institution. Stop right there. Don't click on the link. Instead, what you want to do is you want to look to see if it truly is coming from your bank. And there's a little clue on the bottom of your email, usually somewhere in the body of the email or at the bottom, you will see an actual address. If you see this address that shows wellsfargo.com online updates, HTTPS, that's a key. We'll go over that later. Then you can pretty much be assured that if you click on the link that it's a valid link. However, if it's anything other than that, do not click on the link. Rule of thumb, not sure, don't click on a link. Why? It could redirect you to a website that could infect your computer, or it could be running a program in the background that will compromise your computer.